When you first open the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 3, you're gonna notice that your accessories will come in this little zippered pouch, which yes, you can keep them in here, but there's an exact place inside the accessory box here that rolls open and everything has its spots. We're gonna go through, I'm gonna show you how you know where everything goes, plus there's extra space back here. And don't forget, there's actually one item that fits on the base here. It's the extra throat plate plate that comes with this machine. So we're going to go through each and every one of these. Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and you are going to find all of the video tutorials for the Epic 3 in a YouTube playlist and that playlist link is going to be in the description below. So if you're finding this video, there's going to be over 100 other videos that you can learn to master your machine through watching these and doing. Don't forget about the doing. You can watch all you want, but if you're gonna actually learn, you're gonna have to have the machine turned on and let's do some of the kind of step-by-step -step learning parts together. Touch the screen, sew it out. We also have some online courses. A couple of the samples behind the machine right now are the Husqvarna Viking Stitching Cosmos, which is all those blocks with different sewing techniques, and a small version of our Husqvarna Viking Design Positioning Masterclass. So you can check out those links, and all of our courses have free videos that you can watch and see if that course is gonna be right for you. Okay, so starting off, before I go into this, I am going to just put one little note out there on your foot control if you're looking for the power cord. This has a retractable power cord. So you're just gonna pull this out and plug it into the side of the machine. Now for sewing, great. Embroidery, I don't always have my students attached to the foot control. There is a time and place to have this on when you're embroidering, but just remember, you will probably be using the start stop button for embroidery most of the time. But for sewing, I like to have it, but again, we'll be able to use this button for sewing and not having to touch the foot control as well. Okay, so as we go through here, I'll make some notes about the different feet. Um, also, how many bobbins come with this machine? And I have a tip for you of how many bobbins our students find that they prefer to have. So I'm just gonna dump all these out so I don't forget any of the, the ones. Okay, let's start with these. These are the larger uh, caps that you find in the machine. So when you lift up the top edge and you bring the thread stand all the way up to its highest position, I know that goes way more than you can see, you flip these up and these need to go down first, have the little kind of um, ridge on top. And then when you actually set your spool on them, they actually hold everything in place a little bit better. We've had times where customers are not using these and then wondering why they're having some thread issues. As soon as they put these little caps in place for their thread to sit on, issues went away. So don't forget to put these in place. And I know when you go to travel with the machine and you go to put these down, you have room, you can actually kind of leave them in here, just kind of hanging out. So they're there when you get them. They'll also fit in the back storage unit as well. You will find that you're gonna have spool caps, but with these particular ways now that our spool is going on and you're using the thread stand, you're not needing to put these on specifically to hold the spool down in place. But when my spool does get used up and I'm towards the end of the core, it's very skinny, I will put this on top only on a spool that has a kind of a uh, the part of the spool on top as well as the bottom. So see here where it's just a cone and it's not gonna ever get kind of restricted, then I don't usually have to put that on. So just gonna kind of know that they are with your machine, but not as used as often as we used to when we laid thread horizontally. Okay, so I'm gonna put all of these little guys in the back for now. Next, let's talk about, oh, <laughs> here is that extra throat plate, and it has a home down in the bottom, like I was showing you, and let me explain what this is first. So it's a straight stitch throat plate. So it's got a single hole here where this one is the zigzag throat plate. This one means your needle can be on the far left or the far right and to do all your decorative stitches. What I love about this is on the Husqvarna Viking Epic 3 is that when you put it on, it will automatically sense and not let you do a decorative stitch that would 
make you go too far and you'd hit and break the needle. So it will actually be censored. So when you put it on, it won't let you pick other stitches. So if you forget, it will pop up with a message like your uh, throat plate is the straight stitch one and for you to remove it. I do use this when I do uh, piecing for my quilt blocks. I use it when I free motion quilt and I love it when I do embroidery. So here you can actually just set it kind of down in the little ridge. So you set it so these little fingers kind of go in kind of on the right side and then when you slide it over they kind of hold in place and then you can use this little hole opening to push and release it and then switch them out. So when you're using this one You'll put your other plate in that place. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that down there for right now. So I have a nice handful of bobbins. I'm counting nine bobbins that come with this machine. They are taller. If you are a previous Husqvarna Viking user and you have the green bobbins that are a little shorter, yes, they fit, but they bounce. So I'm not a fan of using those. I do see my customers trying to use them, but what happens is they're not tall enough and so they kind of bounce while they're being used. So I'd avoid that. I'd wind any thread if you still have some of those bobbins onto your new blue bobbins. And what I'm gonna do is let's talk about how many bobbins do you really need for sewing and embroidery. So we have found that our customers like to have anywhere from 20 to 30 bobbins. So some you might like separate and put for just embroidery bobbin thread on. Maybe you have 10 or a dozen of those specifically for that. Um, but you will definitely find having a nice assortment, probably up to 30 would be enough for sewing and embroidery with this machine. Now I'm gonna give you a little hint. If you happen to have also a FOF store in your area, and some Husqvarna Viking stores are also FOF dealers. FOF bobbins that are the purple are also the same size as your Viking Epic bobbins that are blue. So <laughs> you can actually buy purple bobbins from them and they will work in this machine and you might even like to have like maybe you wind all your embroidery bobbin thread on one color and all your sewing colors on the other. So just a nice little tip. If that is something, let me know in the comments below, how many bobbins do you like to have or have found that is like your happy amount? Leave that little note in the comments. We love to hear from our students that are watching these videos. And if this video is, is helpful for you, make sure after you watch it, or you can do it right now, click like. We need to have you click like every video that you watch that helps us greatly. So that's like your way of saying thank you and it costs you nothing to click that like button. If you wanna be notified when more videos are coming out, then the subscribe button is the one you wanna also select as well. Okay, let's go on with the other items. You have a regular foot that is on the machine and I'm gonna point out one thing about this machine because it has like the dual feed feature, you can see that little groove in the back. That's the part where the dual feed comes down and it's like your built-in walking foot is some of your feet are gonna have that little cutout in the groove and then some of them actually do not have have that cut out. So here are a couple that do. The white one with the H, that is your non-stick foot. See how that has an opening? And here's the tip, and you're gonna hear me talking about this throughout our tutorials, is if you put a foot on with the cutout, you must, must, must pull this part down. The dual feed feature must be engaged. Otherwise, you're gonna have like this big gap and this wiggliness of your fabric. And I see that happening in class, and the people wonder, well, why is my stitch kind of looking all crappy? And it's because you, you haven't engaged all the features that you need for using this particular foot. Now let me compare it to a foot that does not have that opening. See how there's a, it's filled in solid back here? This is an S foot and also the B foot is the same thing. It does not have that cutout. So if you've somehow got this foot on without a cutout, with the dual feeding gauge, you're gonna have a weird looking everything. Nothing is gonna work. And I've also seen people try that too. So make sure that you are being aware of which foot you have on. The machine will actually tell you whether you need to have it engaged or not anyway. And look for the little picture of the foot recommended for every stitch you pick because this little picture will change as you go. So we can start lining up these little feet kind of right down here in the bottom area and I'm gonna pull that dual feed down. Yes, so it's there. If it's a little wider one, you have some wider openings for those wider feet. Okay, you have two buttonhole feet, a C foot, 
is identical to each other, but this one is the automatic one. It will plug in on the back side and it will allow you to do the same length of buttonhole over and over and over. I like to put this also into the back area. That way it just it can just be thrown in there and it's super easy. But here's a little trick. The buttonhole foot has this little nub on the back and that's for a corded buttonhole. But when you put it into the accessory box, turn it upside down and let me show you what you're looking for. You're looking for the part where the feet fit that has a little cutout. And when it sits in there, that means this closes correctly. So again, this is how it's gonna start to look. You saw me putting bobbins in that goes in these nice little holders so they don't spin and unwind. I love that. J is your overlock foot. So I'm gonna just kind of set these in as I talk about it. We have D is your blind hem foot. You have a quarter inch foot that is the one with the little red marks and it has a cutout on the back for the dual feet. So make sure you put that engaged. Your zipper foot is foot E and the way I'm holding it is the way you have to put it on. So those three little prongs, they stick out the back side. It's because you put it either on the right side of the ankle or you put it on the left side. So depending on what side you're actually working on for your zipper, you'll know when you see it then the dual feed will come down into this little channel. So that's how you know when you're in the correct place. I already talked about the white foot. That's the non-slip foot. There is quite a collection of feet here. We have two embroidery feet. One is an R foot. R can also be used for free motion quilting as well. And the sensor Q foot is actually the, your true embroidery foot. That's the one I would recommend that you put on. But they do give you both depending on what you're working on. I like to keep these close by. So I put my embroidery foot kind of up front in this area and the R foot can have its own little spot. What I'm left with right here, just some other basic accessories. So first off, the magnetic screwdriver is nice because you can use this end and it actually kind of naturally attaches to the screw. And here's a little tip. When you're taking your foot on and off or your needle in and out, you wanna always tighten it gently. So there's a happy medium. There's over tightening, which over time will bust whatever you're tightening. And then there's, I'm tight enough that it doesn't open up or loosen up as you use it. So keep that in mind. And this little part on the other end, I do use for when I am taking the throat plate on and off, which it comes in just underneath one of the sides here. You can just put it in and then twist and then up it comes, making it really easy to clean this machine. So yes, we will be doing a video on how to clean and take care of the machine, how to get in here, what not to do, and make sure you watch that video too. So this is actually a tool I use quite a bit. So I like to keep that up front where I am um, always working here. We have a variety pack of needles. I'll be talking needles throughout this, um, throughout the videos for different fabrics. And you can tell the machine what fabric you're putting on and it will recommend which needle and needle size to actually use. So I think needles are pretty important. So once again, we'll put them up front. Thread cone holders. So if you have a bigger cone with a bigger base that you're using up here, stick this up through the middle and it won't rock around so much. You have two. Again, something I use, but not a lot. Seam ripper. Gosh, you never could have enough of these. Take the cap off, put it on the other end. And now you have a handle. If you did not know that, you've just been using a stubby seam ripper. Now, now you know. Okay. Um, I like to put that where I don't need it because then I don't need it. Okay, uh, brush, we'll talk about cleaning the machine. Brushes are handy to have, but keep that close by. Uh, a multi-purpose tool is what they call this. So you'll see me using this for like sewing on buttons or even the little hole here to lift and hold the needle in place when I'm taking it out or putting it back in. It's like easy way to hold the needle and it doesn't, um, you don't have to have your hands in there so much. And it's also to get over like a really thick seam like denim, um, seams like on a hem. So handy thing, but I'm gonna put it back there. Once again, I found some more spool caps, so not as needed these days. Uh, you know, these aren't bad to have around. I rarely use them, but boy, when I need them, they're little thread nets. So if I ever have some thread that's kind of puddling, it's not sticking on the spool, it's kind of dropping down and getting kind of tangled at the base, you can put a thread net over it and it will kind of contain it better. Some people will put these on when they have metallic threads that aren't working so well, and that will make them uh, behave. I have also seen people cut these in half because they only need like 
a shorter version of this, so don't be afraid. You got, I see four of them in here, so you can cut them to the size you need them. And the last two things that I have, I have a seam guide, which by the way fits into the opening back here, and you can set it to be like two inches or four inches. You can get it to be anywhere you want. And little stickers, okay, it's so funny on these guys. The little sticker is the yellow. And what you can do is these are non-slip. It's like having a non-stick foot that you, so you can put these stickers on any of your metal feet and they will be perfect for stitching on like vinyl or leather and make it so it doesn't stick. If you've ever heard the tips about using like tissue paper and things, all you have to do is put the stickers on and voila, that foot is ready to be used with vinyl. And yes, so you do have like the regular H foot, the white one, but this would be used for like put on your zipper foot or even an open toe foot. So you can transfer this to any of those other feet, which I absolutely love. Okay, so you'll find all the links to the other videos that we have done in the description below. I need you to click like if you've gotten to the end of this video for sure. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified when new videos come out on all the machines that we film.